alpha lipoic acid or ALA for short is a fatty acid that's found in abundance in the mitochondria of living cells. Uh, the mitochondria are like little power stations. They're basically the uh, center of uh, energy metabolism within the cellular structure itself. And on a kind of microscopic scale, they, uh, the c cumulative effect of all of the mitochondria is to provide energy on a macroscopic scale. So ALA is a... Uh, it's an interesting fatty acid. We get a, uh, most of it in our diets. It's actually uh, we something that we we can consume within a regular healthy diet and probably get enough for the regular metabolic processes. But um, some studies have highlighted the fact that supplementing ALA in addition to dietary intake can have some beneficial effects on health and one of those uh, is a particularly interesting one uh, to me you can read the whole article by the way on the website researchsupplements.com uh, where I, I sort of detail all of the the benefits uh, dosage all of that stuff but one of the interesting effects that I wanted to highlight was uh, one of the studies that looked into co-ingestion of ALA with creatine so uh, I believe the control group only uh, in the in the study took creatine alone, and the test group had this combination of alpha lipoic acid and creatine. Now, if you know about creatine, then you know it's one of the most, if not the most, proven bodybuilding supplement on the planet. Um, it provides uh, it's a donor to the energy cycle again, so it provides uh, basically m molecules to the adenosine triphosphate production in cells, adenosine triphosphate, ATP, being the basic fuel uh, for living for living tissue, so particularly muscular muscle tissue. Um, so creatine, very good, very good for strength gains, very good for muscle gains, and highly proven, highly, highly proven. Um, the thing is with creatine is it's, it's not a pre-workout supplement. It's not something that you need to take 30 minutes before exercise, etc., etc. It's something that you accumulate in your system and it actually saturates uh, your your cells uh, to the point where it becomes this reservoir um, that, that the body can essentially tap into whenever it needs energy. Uh, that's a very sort of basic way of putting it, but the, the reservoir thing is important to note with creatine because it's found in a lot of pre-workouts uh, and at very low dosages, I might say, but a lot of people therefore associate it with the sort of pre-workout habit where you need to take creatine prior to a workout. But uh, like I just said, it's actually more of a, a an accumulative thing that you take every day and you just top up your reservoir. And when you have your reservoir uh, full, i.e. Uh, no more creatine can be absorbed, then you've got the biggest, uh, the largest amount of energy available to be tapped into. So that's that's creatine. Now, what's interesting about ALA is that it can increase the absorption or the uptake of creatine into the muscles. So that reservoir basically is just has just been made bigger by ALA. So that's, uh, to me, is one of the most interesting effects that ALA has. Yes, it's an antioxidant. Um, yes, it can provide you know other benefits in terms of uh, metabolic processes and so on, but this this effect with the creatine is really interesting and something that is really easy to implement because creatine is cheap. Uh, ALA is either in a bunch of pre-workouts or you can buy it separately. So it's easy enough to, to test yourself and, you know, take some notes one month with creatine, one month just adding, adding the ALA or, or whatever, whatever m m works for you. But uh, there you go. Read the whole uh, article on the website there and you'll find out the other benefits and what the best dosage is, the side, potential side effects and any other sort of um, interesting symbiotic relationships with other supplements. Thanks.